So far in this particular module, we have talked about different layers. Layers such as sensing, it started with the sensing, sensing connectivity which took care of communication networking and so on, connectivity processing. So, the, the data that are collected will have to be processed. So, processing we have talked about and then comes the control. So, basically based on the processing may be some kind of a feedback will have to be given back some kind of a control right. So, for this actually there are different different uh, process control mechanisms are there particularly in automation industries, industries which support uh, different automation. Technologies such as PLCs, CADAs etcetera are used. So, we are going to have a brief look at each of these technologies PLC, SCADA and so on and uh, at the end uh, I promise you to show you um, uh, the use of this PLC SCADA kind of system in a case study uh, that uh, we have used uh, for implementing a certain uh, application with the help of uh, this PLC SCADA kind of system. So, we, I will show you that at the end. So, let us start with uh, at the very beginning we need to understand um, you know uh, this control part in the industrial scenario. So, there are different processes which control this in industrial instruments, the way they work and so on. So, there are different electromechanical instruments that are there and these their associated systems are used in the industries to control and offer feedback to the, the machinery that is used, the process that is being implemented that is in process that means it is being executed and so on. So, the there are four major components, there are four major components. The first one over here is we need to understand the first one is the process variable. Process variable are basically the values of the process parameters measured using devices such as sensors. So, these process variables uh, 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 or the values of these process parameters would be measured with the help of sensors. Then comes the set points, set points are basically the standard values of the process parameters for controlled operation of the process. So, this is very important, this is for feedback control. So, controlled operation of the process for that we have this concept of the state uh, set points which are the standard values of the process parameters. Next comes uh, the concept of the controller. So, the controller uh, basically uh, uh, takes certain actions right. So, based on the process variable based on uh, the, uh, the, the, the set point uh, value and so on, uh, it takes certain decisions it, uh, or actions and it compares the process variables with the set points before it takes the action. So, this is what this controller does and this is what you see over here in this picture as well. So, we have this controller, we have the actuator, the process and the measurement right. So, the based on the set points. Uh, basically this controller. So, so this controller does this controlling then comes the actuator the processing is done over here and uh, then based on the measurements of uh, how things are. Uh, so, this uh, there is a feedback uh, back to the controller. So, this this is this feedback cycle uh, where the, uh, based on the measurements of the current process parameters and so on uh, there is a uh, uh, there is a control loop back to the controller. And then we have the manipulating variables uh, which are basically process variables modified, modified based on the control decisions to manipulate the process. So, so, this is this important part the manipulation of the variables is the most important part uh, in this particular process and for that this measurement uh, is very important. So, we uh, let us look at this control loop because it is this control loop which is the attractive part in the whole process control automation and so on. So, uh, th this control loop is the fundamental element of industrial control systems and uh, this basically these control loops help in automatic control unmanned autonomous control automatic control of industrial process variables is offered with the help of this control loop. So, there are two types of control loops one is the open control loop open loop control rather and the other one is the feedback control or the closed loop control. So, um, open loop control open loop here the control decision is made independent of the process variable control decision independent of the process variable whereas, in the feedback mechanism of the 
closed loop mechanism the control decision basically depends on the measured value of the process variable. So, there are two types of control. So, there are different industrial control systems that are used uh, for process control. Um, one is the one is the PLC the programmable logic controller, second is the DCS the distributed control systems and the third is the SCADA which stands for supervisory control and data acquisition. Supervisory control and data acquisition is C A D A. So, this SCADA and SCADA in turn basically use the concept of the PLCs. So, what is this PLC? So, basically PLC is the industrial control system. So, it is the industrial controller in control system and this is based on the programming logic of monitoring the monitoring the industrial processes and taking control actions based on certain predefined computer program. Okay. So, the computer program has you know a predefined set of instructions is provided to the system and based on that the control actions are taken and for that first the monitoring will have to be performed. So, it comprises of a processor unit, a memory unit power supply and communication modules. It is used in assembly lines and robotic manufacturing devices a lot. So, assembly all assembly line uh, things you know nowadays where there is automation, uh, robotic, uh, robotic manufacturing uh, facilities mostly you will find that uh, what is used are these different PLCs in different forms. Distributed control systems are uh, specially designed control systems that are used to control highly distributed plants having large number of control loops. Uh, large number of control loops is basically the characteristics of the use of DCS and uh, DCS basically provides uh, increased uh, reliability uh, because there is distributed control. So, if you have distributed control, if you have distributed control then that basically offers uh, you know uh, large, uh, 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 large reliability, reliability because you know so the control itself has been distributed. So, if one element fails uh, you are going to still have improved reliability. The main major uh, components in use in DCS are the central supervisory controller, distributed controller, field devices such as the sensors actuators and so on and this communication backbone the high speed network communication network and it, ha it has to be high speed that is the requirement for serving the different uh, co communication requirements in the industrial sector particularly the manufacturing process plant and so on. So, we will now uh, have a look at the SCADA which is very popular. SCADA is very popular in industrial automation plants and this is very attractive in uh, the industry 4.0 context. Uh, because these are the building blocks basically, because uh, in the industrial for uh, industry 4.0 we are talking about a lot about um, you know automation, uh, connectivity between these different machines autonomously, autonomous moni uh, monitoring, control, feedback control and so on. So, um, this kind of uh, device SCADA based device uh, basically is helpful in order to achieve the requirements of industry 4.0. So, industrial process automation systems uh, are used in automatic traffic management, water distribution, uh, then electrical power grids and so on. And uh, uh, in, in this particular lecture, I am going to show you the case study of use of SCADA in water distribution system, but it could be used in other uh, plants also. So, water distribution system I will show you where we are using uh, SCADA based uh, control system for uh, monitoring the water distribution in test bed scale in one of our facilities in our campus at IIT Kharagpur. So, these are some of these different components uh, sensors, relays, uh, telemetry units, SCADA master units, HMIs that means the human machine interfaces and the communication infrastructure these are the different uh, facilities that are used and that are the these are the different components that are used. So, here is the architecture of uh, SCADA. So, here we have um, as you can see uh, we start with the HMI um, the which is the human machine interface then comes the master unit which takes the digital signals from the HMI and then converts to uh, the analog signal. So, this basically this master unit sits in between the HMI and the communication net network and converts the digital signals to analog and analog to digital and vice versa. Then that 
particular signal after conversion flows through this communication network and uh, goes to the PLC to the RTU from the PLC the sensors actuators the different field devices are controlled like this and so on and these communications are two way communication as we can see over here the double headed arrows basically represent the, uh, that uh, the, there is uh, you know double sided uh, communication SCADA systems. So, right now I am going to show you one of the applications of uh, the use of SCADA and PLC. So, this application I have chosen from the water sector, uh, water distribution particularly and uh, this is uh, basically a facility that we have in IIT Kharagpur uh, in the school of water resources. So, this is uh, a kind of uh, lab test bed uh, set up for water distribution uh, monitoring uh, particularly with res respect to leakage. Uh, and autonomous and continuous monitoring and so on. So, uh, of uh, water pipes uh, uh, monitoring with respect to leakage and it can be even extended for other types of monitoring, monitoring of water quality and uh, so on and so forth. So, I have with me uh, Professor uh, Manoj Kumar Tiwari who is a faculty member in the School of Water Resources and also uh, Miss Dina who is a, a PhD student in this particular department. So, I would request you to talk about a little bit uh, you know explain about this particular facility that you have. So, Professor Tiwari could you explain like what is this setup all about? Uh, thank you Professor Mistra. So, actually uh, what you are seeing here is uh, as Professor Mistra suggested it is a test bed for water distribution. So, it is kind of a prototype for water distribution network what usually we see in the fields. There are pipes of different sizes which represents main, sub mains and the branch or distribution pipes and this network is nicely equipped with the uh, various pressure uh, meters. Right now I am going to show you a practical demonstration of the use of PLC and SCADA based system. So, this specific system is about water distribution monitoring and uh, so we have a system in the school of water resources in IIT Kharagpur. And this particular system basically has end to end monitoring of water distribution and it would be also extended for water quality monitoring. So, um, we have with us Professor Manoj Kumar Tiwari from the School of Water Resources and also Miss Dina who is the PhD student over here. So, I would request them to explain more about uh, this particular facility that they have and uh, then uh, we will also look at uh, the applications of SCADA. Uh, in uh, in water distribution. So, Professor Tiwari, what is this facility that you have? Could you please explain? Uh, yeah, thank you, Professor Mistra. So, actually, uh, this is a uh, prototype of a water distribution network, the kind of networks that we see in the real field. So, there are, uh, you, if you can see, there are different pipe sizes. So, some are simulating kind of mains, then sub mains and branch pipe. So, uh, the idea of developing this network is to test the things that actually occur in real field. So, this network or this uh, system is equipped with various pressure sensors, flow monitors and actuators in order to control, monitor and operate it in the real time uh, through uh, SCADA and PLC based systems. Uh, Dina is uh, working on this system, so she will further explain the details of the system. So, Dina could you please explain uh, like how things work over here? Thank you sir. Uh, as already it has been explained uh, that this is a prototype of a real water distribution network and we all know that water distribution networks expand over vast areas hence its manual monitoring is a pretty challenging task. So, the aim of our work is to devise a methodology of uh, remote monitoring of these systems uh, through the use of SCADA and PLC. Uh, when we come to a water distribution network both quality and quantitative parameters are important and right now we are uh, monitoring only the quantity parameters uh, which are essentially the pressure pressure at intermediate locations of the system and the flow rate at the demand nodes of the system. Uh, so, here for example, we have a pressure sensor installed uh, at the junction of the pipe network to give us the pressure at, uh, pressure at this point. Likewise, we have the pressure sensors at many locations of this uh, network. Again, we here have actuators which are installed at different uh, locations of the network. So, these actuators are actually uh, Control, uh, control devices where we can 
uh, where we can control the rate of demand from the uh, from the uh, uh, locations itself so here we have the actuators which are located at different uh, locations of the network and these actuators are basically control devices where we can increase or decrease the demand flowing through these uh, flowing through these locations in the network so if i may add actually it's uh, there are the amount of opening how much flow is to be maintained from this outflow junction can be controlled with such actuators so these actuators that way will be able to control the flow in a distribution network or a distribution pipe from a junction that way and uh, these further these actuators can be controlled remotely can be monitored remotely so uh, with the like in the real time system we always need not to go to the field in order to control the flow in a pipe or in order to sort of uh, maintain uh, the distribution or the demand from one particular sector so the next component that i am going to show are the flow meters flow meters in a pipe network is essentially the demand node from where consumers can uh, take the water for their necessity so here we have a manual paddle wheel flow meter which is connected to a electromagnetic flow meter for uh, knowing the flow through the uh, paddle wheel flow meter here so the electromagnetic flow meter is uh, monitored remotely through the scatter system okay. and the data will be available to us in our system okay so, so dina what is uh, this flow meter all about what does it do so basically the flow meter is installed here so that we know how much demand is consumed at the consumer point mm -hmm. and uh, this uh, data is required uh, to actually in in real systems this data is required uh, to uh, um, build the customers on the uh, amount of water that uh, the customer is using okay so everything can be monitored in real time yes, through sir. that scatter scatter yes, based sir. system yes, so yes. actually uh, this flow meter essentially records the quantity of water flowing at a given instance mm -hmm. and then it has a totalizer also okay. so over a period of time mm -hmm. how much total water has passed through this pipe will be uh, known to us excellent and uh, that is what actually is used while billing the consumers okay. because how much water has been passed to their homes and uh, what consumption they have made so based on that the billing uh, for water can be done so dina so uh, could you explain a little bit further about uh, this particular instrument this flow yes, meter sir. Uh, yes sir so this pedal wheel flow meter needs to be uh, pulled and so this is how we open the pedal wheel flow meter as soon as this pedal wheel flow meter is opened and uh, the water flow is stabilized the reading for the the reading for the flow rate of the uh, through this pedal wheel flow meter will be displayed here and also the total amount of water passing through this flow meter over a period of time will also be displayed here so like right now although the, there is no flow so it is showing 0 meter cube per hour the instantaneous flow but the totalizer is saying that it is it has been basically uh, had over 1300 meter cube flow has been passed through in a given span of time so from whatever this uh, like the operation was installed or reset at zero point so okay. from that point forwards 1345 meter cube of flow has already been passed through okay. this okay okay wonderful is there anything else that you have over here other instruments that you might have uh, other instruments as such like uh, there is uh, weather monitoring station mm -hmm. that can be seen here okay this also basically collects the data and transports in the real time the weather data and uh, from this network the other interesting work which we are doing is because one of the major challenges in the real field network is in terms of water losses mm -hmm. so in india the urban distribution network distribution networks only faces losses of the order of say 40% okay. that's a huge amount right and there is no mechanism over there to basically uh, detect these losses in real time or and then because until unless we detect mm -hmm. there is no rectification possible so first challenge is the detection mm. so uh, with this the kind of actuators we have we artificially create leaks in these networks and then developing a system for the real time detection of the leakages from the distribution network so professor tiwari earlier you said that uh, at present what you have is the water monitoring uh, particularly with respect to distribution uh, control over the distribution over the network and uh, can it be extended for monitoring the water quality as well at different points of the network absolutely definitely so like uh, whether we are monitoring a quality parameter or a quantity parameter all we need a sensor 
so like we have pressure sensors which are monitoring pressure in the distribution line we can of course install water quality sensor like residual chlorine ph orp tds so there are sensors available for this and if we install those sensors in this network which eventually we might do we have some idea of that so uh, when we install these sensors in this uh, this thing so they we will be able to getting the real time water quality parameters as well so we can basically make the consumers assure that the water quality they are getting through their distribution network or uh, through their water supply systems are of the potable quality or domestically usable quality so this uh, the different sensor values um, these are also tagged with the specific location from where this particular value is coming so whether it is with respect to the quantity or quality so the specific reading that is coming so one can know that this is from this particular point or location from where this sensor value has come absolutely professor mr so all these devices sensors can be geo tagged also okay so uh, let's go downstairs and there we can see that how these sensors located at different places are tagged in this thing so that so you can know specifically yeah, that we from know which location absolutely the data so has from come. which location how much um, reading or uh, like we can monitor the specific locations in real time with the help of quality or quantity sensors okay thank you so what we have seen so far is basically the water distribution network the physical part of it how the test bed showing the different uh, water pipes their branches and so on how they have been structured how they have been organized how they have been located so we have seen that we have also seen that there are different sensors iot devices like uh, you know water um, uh, water uh, pressure sensor and uh, different other water uh, monitoring sensors are uh, located at different points and uh, these values the sensor values also come tagged with the specific geolocation uh, from where that particular value has come so all of these things can be monitored from a central point uh, where basically uh, one can sit and monitor have a look at the complete picture of the water distribution system so we are going to go downstairs at the other location from where this particular facility has been installed and we can have a look at uh, uh, how how things are being monitored from that uh, that particular location it is enabled with scada it is enabled with plc so we are going to see how this scada and plc based system will help us to monitor centrally uh, the overall water distribution network so we are at the control room the monitoring point from where the water distribution system that you have seen so far can be monitored and centrally controlled so on my back is basically the plc controller and on my left is the scada based uh, system that can help in the supervisory control and monitoring so what we have i'll just show you what is inside this particular panel so this is the plc control panel so as you can see over here there is lot of electronics and so on so this is the main thing the plc controller this is the main plc controller and dina can i now uh, request you to explain uh, the different other uh, uh, functionalities that we have over here sure sir as you can see here sir the system of wires here are connected to the sensors on the top floor where okay. we had already seen the system mm -hmm. so all the pressure sensor pressure signals and the flow signals are uh, in analog form mm -hmm. and it is transferred to the system of wires to this uh, location mm -hmm. so all these components here are basically to change the di uh, analog uh, signals to digital form and uh, these components are for that purpose right. however this is the main part of this uh, system mm -hmm. where these are the analog input signals mm -hmm. these are the two analog outputs right. and these are the digital outputs mm -hmm. and as you have already mentioned digit this is the digital uh, uh, this is the plc so i will add a little more on to this so because we have the uh, network installed right over the rooftop of this own building so we are getting the uh, signals or which are monitored from the sensors through these wires but what happens in the real field uh, this scada systems or real field uh, systems when we apply it to the let's say larger distribution network and there are uh, 
the system is actually there in place at few places mm -hmm. so it becomes very difficult mm -hmm. to get the wired signal from far off points right. so what we can use is we can use wireless technology mm -hmm. so the sensors that record the data and through wireless communication it could be directly sent to the plc excellent so basically yeah. what you are saying is that instead of using the wired technology we could use wireless communication technology in order to send the data from the real um, the real sensors to this particular controller absolutely and it is actually in place at few uh, like it is already in, uh, installed at few places and as you were saying that it is more useful and uh, more convenient basically because wireless technology you do not have to really dig the wires and uh, through the uh, you know, absolutely the you do absolutely. not have to come connect to the different cables yes yes, so, yes, okay. yes so that that becomes much more handy because you need not to basically control the uh, you know need not to install a such a long wired system to bring all the information to the plc okay you can just the sensor records it and through wireless communication it directly sends to the plc system okay, okay. and the rest of the process then becomes right. uh, easier okay thank you so on my right is basically the scada hmi which basically helps you to graphically have a look at the entire water distribution system and basically to have complete knowledge of from which point how much water is flowing through and also if there is any leakage at any of the points that also can be detected through this particular interface. So can you show us um, how we can monitor leakage in this particular panel? Sure sir. Uh, sir, for an experimental purpose, if I want to create a leakage at a location, I will be using the actuators where I have control from the HMI. So here as you can see it is 0% now that means right. it has no leakage at all. Mm -hmm. So I just click here and I uh, click the desired percentage of leakage that I want to create and the same percentage of opening will be done in the actual system and the water will flow through as it is shown here. So this leakage is actually uh, monitored, like the detection of leakage what we were discussing mm -hmm. is uh, because this is an experimental network. So here we artificially create leakage right. and then through a uh, software simulation mm -hmm. we are, uh, which we are developing, mm -hmm. we will act be able to identify the location and to some extent the quantitative volume of the leakage. Correct. Okay. So, Professor Tiwari, uh, so uh, you have a wonderful facility over here. Um, so, the SCADA based systems are available everywhere, and uh, you know, so this is an example of the use of SCADA based system uh, in for water distribution monitoring and so on. And um, so, this has been developed by uh, one of the uh, private firms. Uh, uh, what it, can you speak a little bit yeah, about so uh, this? It's actually a Chennai based company, MEL Systems private limited okay. so they have uh, done this installation and this is uh, as far as i know of this is the first such facility in the nation okay where we can on a lab scale we can basically monitor control and try to operate a water distribution network right and so basically with the help of this kind of installation you are able to emulate the behavior of water distribution in a real real kind of environment absolutely absolutely so uh, these are the differences uh, uh, that one could go through uh, in this uh, particular context and, um, and these are some of these references if you are interested to know about SCADA, PLCs, you know process control and so on. Uh, these are some of the ones that uh, you know I would encourage you to uh, go through. With this we come to an end of uh, this particular lecture, thank you.